guys. Uh, the next video that I'm posting is a knife defense analysis video. Uh, I shot it with my two younger brothers two weeks ago for the whole quarantine thing. Um, been listening to a podcast called Modern Aikido is Podcast, and the gentleman on there challenged everyone to test out their knife defense skills in kind of a, a live situation. So this was one of the means that he suggested you do it. And so I bought some white t-shirts, bought some dry erase markers, and some safety glasses. Got my two younger brothers, both in their 20 and 30s, uh, fit but untrained, and told them to stab me. Um, they were, of course, delighted to do that. And we also all took turns as the defender. Unfortunately, I only recorded the first nine times that we did it, where we each kind of took a turn as a defender and didn't record any of the scenarios that we did. I wish I had, because there was some good stuff that went on with them. Uh, but I'll try and uh, recap them in the summary after we watch the videos. So the plan, uh, watch the three videos, uh, talk about each one afterwards, what my thoughts were, and then just, I guess, hope to provoke a discussion and your thoughts about um, where your own knife defense stands. Uh, I learned a lot. I also learned that uh, Aikido defenses work. I brought in a little bit of other martial art training that I had during the um, during the defense. So the setup was uh, one on one, one knife for the attacker, nothing for the defender, uh, no punches and kicks allowed by anybody, and um, thirty second matches, essentially a match. Um, so let's go take a look at the first one. I uh, also wanted to add that uh, the other stipulation was that we at least start at 50% because none of the three of us had ever done anything like this before and, and I didn't know if the markers would cut us or not. Um, we got a little bit bump, bumps and bruises and a couple cuts, but nothing terrible. Uh, and of course, just like any drill or exercise that's kind of live, uh, it sped up rather quickly. That's now 50%. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So first things first, the dog was okay. She just yelped, no broken paws. Second, I know it looked like a goofball, but the two pairs of pants that I was willing to get dirty that I had uh, bought, I uh, gave to my brothers because they didn't want to get their pants dirty. So I put a pair of shorts on and I was cold, so I put some long johns on. Uh, and then, and third, uh, you can tell my brothers were exuberant about stabbing me. They did not follow the 50% rule, at least starting off may have been all the being the younger brother to me so <laughs> uh so first thing first uh i think i definitely died that first cut was right in the solar plexus probably would have hit the arteries that run up and down the spine because that was a pretty hard hit uh the second cut that i got uh was on the leg um pain was on the outside of the leg so hopefully no major uh arteries were cut at that point um I had two disarms. The first disarm, uh, you couldn't really see it, but it was a Nikyo Omote, kind of a gooseneck grip. And then the second one, later towards the end of the video, was sort of like an Atemi-Nage turn, and I kind of disarmed it with a Sankyo. Um, so, uh, the biggest thing I learned about this one, this is the first, that was the first one to go, was just how fast it was, uh, especially at full speed. With someone actually trying to get you and the knife blade yeah yay big real knife blade this or bigger or smaller too actually but either way still got caught up uh for me personally i started to pick up on how fast it went and my i think my next two videos went a little bit better uh still got caught up a bunch but we'll show you those next Oh, 
time. All right, so that was the second video. Uh, my middle brother took a more measured approach to the 50% rule, at least starting out. Uh, kind of saw it as uh, three separate attacks that he started with. Um, in the, and I still got caught up a lot. May or may not have died, but definitely significantly injured. Um, first attack, yeah, first disarmed attack, I just flayed my pack. I was going more for like a sealot tra uh, sea trap, trap. Um, but he slipped out and it slid right down uh, across my chest there. Um, the second attack uh, went a little bit better, sort of. Um, he grabbed me, slipped out of the grip, and reestablished grip on him. And then I went for the knife hand, he sliced me up the belly a little bit. Um, then kind of did like a, a ikyo roll. But the one thing I wasn't counting on was him switching the knife. Uh, so many times because we never have really trained that in practice um, And then he just stabbed me in the spine the third attack I think kind of went the best um, Let's went to attack got his back And then kind of did like almost like a backhand sort of stab I caught it and then Kofi Naga him to the ground Unfortunately, I lost my balance and we both got up and then the time was over so some success a lot of failures, but Definitely learned a lot from that one as well. Oh! So third video, uh, I think went the best for me. Um, what I noticed that I did was uh, establish connecting by grabbing the empty hand. Um, he didn't go for an attack right away. So I did sort of an atemi slash trip on the leg that took him to the ground. And then I just kind of maintained a dominant position on him, uh, trying to work for the disarm. So um, right when he first went down, um, I mean, I had distance, I could have gotten away or could have gone back to try and disarm him and make the situation safe. That just kind of depends on the situation. Like if you're trapped in a room or you're trying to protect someone else, you know, you kind of got to go back and take the dominant position and try and subdue him. But if it had been an alley, I probably would have booked it out of there if I managed to trip him and not get cut like that. Um, but the biggest thing that I think I did well, aside from the takedown, was isolate the knife. Um, you can either isolate it against your body in a safe place or even better use gravity in the ground. That knife is not going anywhere unless as he did it switches arms and then you just kind of kind of go with it move back and forth and keeping it on the ground which is what I did. Use my uh, wrists, I used my shin, kind of hopped around did a little bit of a uh, knee on belly from BJJ. Uh, I didn't actually finished for the disarm because I knew the 30 seconds was almost up so I wanted to let him up and kind of see what else would happen. Alright, so um, the other couple scenarios that we ran, which I really wish I had recorded because I could have learned a lot from them just myself, just watching the videos over and over again. We did um, uh, a guy accosting someone at like a table, so we had a chair in the grass sitting down read the threat warnings pretty easily and he just stood up and then started trying to de-escalate the situation and, um, and then it kind of got into a tussle when a knife came out. Uh, some of the other ones we did were two on one, two on two, excuse me, two on one with both guys with a knife was like pretty impossible to survive or at least not get cut. Uh, one guy with a knife, one guy unarmed was a little bit easier but still sucked and the other scenarios we did were like a stick em up sort of thing where both guys had the knives and I died every single time I tried that one with a knife against my throat and another guy with a knife out. Uh, I fared a little bit better um, with one guy having the knife and the other guy being unarmed. And we just went back and forth with who had what. Um, I will make a note that during one of the, a couple of the two on ones, um, I was able to make use of the objects in the in the field so I had that chair out so I was um, doing some randori movements and that actually kind of saved me a lot I was really happy to see 
uh, bought me some time to kind of circle out and take someone down or at least buy me enough time that I was able to circle around and then take off down the, down the street. Um, I used the chair as kind of like a shield to move around or an obstacle. In that Randorian motion, I just kind of went back and forth along the edge of the fence until I could circle around them and then get away or engage with one person rather than two on one. So learned a lot. Biggest thing in which Sobol Sensei has said over and over again, uh, you're gonna get cut in a knife fight. So try not to be in one, number one. Number two, try and get cut. If you are gonna get cut, don't get killed. Um, train hard, train well. Um, be safe during this scary time. And uh, I should have some more technique videos for you shortly. All right.